Thank you, Microsoft for Startups, for having me over on the highway to 100 unicorns. I'm excited to talk about impact-driven startups here. But before I jump in, I want to introduce myself. I've been a multi-stage investor and operator for the past 15 years, and I've worked across emerging markets in the MENA region, Singapore, and India. I'm currently heading venture capital and private equity for Panthera Capital Investments. I've invested and advised in multiple alternative asset classes over the past 15 years. Many of these were impact driven, either in the form of startups or large scale infrastructure projects or hedging risks of governments, developmental organizations, supranational banks, etc. I was also the pioneer one of the pioneers of the Singapore startup ecosystem back in the day in the mid 2000s, when I led some of the first few entrepreneurial ties for Singapore universities with the Silicon Valley. I founded and served on the board of ASA Stanford's Singapore chapter that executed impact driven initiatives to foster entrepreneur community in Singapore. And I co-founded a startup with this community at the time in Singapore as well. I'm a computer engineer from NTU Singapore and later did an MBA from the Wharton School. So that's a brief about myself and about my passion for impact-driven tech startups. So let's dive right in. Congratulations on thinking about building an impact startup. That's going to make world a much better place to live in. I'm going to take you through some of the key questions you must ask while building your impact-driven startups like choosing the right driver of impact, testing the commercial viability, building out for scale. I'm also going to make a case for having financial returns. And then I'm gonna talk about how and how much to measure impact, how to get funded, and how to have a mission alignment mindset. Most impact-driven startups originate from the passion of the founders towards solving a sustainability problem. So once you've defined the theme of your impact, spend some time in choosing the right driver to power that impact as well. You could either use a new technology altogether to drive that impact, such as most of the climate tech and ag tech startups, or you could use an existing technology and just apply it in a brand new context or you could use, utilize an existing framework or an infrastructure and introduce impact through technology to make it better. Or you could simply use an innovative business model that drives impact. While most of you would know about the first three drivers, I'll give you an example of this last driver of simply coming up with an innovative business model that drives impact. Warby Parker, a startup that I've seen from when it got founded by some of my seniors at B-School and recently got listed on NASDAQ, is a direct-to-consumer eyewear startup that built in buy a pair, give a pair in its business model from the start. For every pair of eyewear that was bought, a pair was donated. This is an example of simply coming up with an innovative business model that drives impact. Now, moving on to the second bucket, testing the commercial viability. Now, this is about testing the real adoption of your startup. Many times, impact startups fall short of understanding the gap between a needed intervention and adoption. Just because you've validated that there is a problem and your intervention is needed, doesn't mean it would necessarily be adopted. Let's say by some of the frontline stakeholders that you missed to consider even though you've got to go ahead from the top stakeholder. Also, the harder you try to educate your end customer about your product, the higher your cost of uh, uh, acquisition of that customer will be, the higher your CAC will be. So getting the product market fit established by tying this thread across all stakeholders, you would have measured real adoption of your solution. And if you find missing bits in the, this PMF journey, go back to focus on the problem rather than trying to stick hard on your solution and be ready to tweak your solution. 
in all honesty, if you're successful in getting the real stakeholders adopt, you will have pushed the industry or the system to adopt as well. And that's when real impact will begin. The other bucket now I want to talk about is building for scale. Now, scale is important for a number of reasons. And one of the most important being that broad-based impact is important or else excellent social innovation will fail to reach millions of people. The other important factor is that scalability is the favorite term for every investor. And scalability with purpose makes it even more attractive. So you need to deeply understand the scale of the problem you're trying to address, just as in any startup, you need to define your addressable market. If you realize that your solution doesn't have a large enough TAM, repurpose it to address a mass scale problem. Secondly, to achieve scale, you need to make your product accessible and affordable. You could use technology to help you solve a much tougher problem than you uh, otherwise envisaged and make your solution more affordable to compete with conventional players. And technology will also help you scale. Another way to scale is to build the right strategic partnerships, seek regulatory backing, build alliances. All of these are great and essential ways to persuade systems to extend resources towards the problem you're building a solution for. And that would help you achieve scale ultimately. Keep in mind that the global opportunity related to SDGs is estimated to be over $12 trillion. Now I'm going to make a case for financial returns. I feel that impact can and should go hand in hand with financial returns. Impact investments don't need to be any less profitable than ordinary investments. There's always a way to innovate a business model that can build in returns for your impact startup. Think about it, right? There's value for most stakeholders in the wider ecosystem to support impact. There are some institutions that achieve a lower cost of capital because of supporting impact. There are some others that are able to increase their revenue pool. Some use impact to negate their ESG risks. Some get into intentional impact investing. And these days for most organizations, the value of measuring and reporting the double and triple bottom line is increasing. Social and environmental challenges have become one of the main drivers for innovation. Much of the new technology is being used to address global issues that have purpose. So the focus on impact as it is today has perhaps never been as much before. So there's a lot for everyone in the bigger ecosystem to gain from impact driven startups. So please think about building in returns within your impact framework. Let your impact model also become a sustainable business model. And building in returns into your impact startup also helps in many ways, like getting your dream team together. Otherwise, attracting, training, retaining talent in impact startups all the more remains an issue. And if you do build the, build the right team, it can help you effectively scale as well. So instead of letting impact become a handicap to attract the best talent, let impact become a competitive advantage in winning the best talent. And that can only happen when you build in financial returns as part of your business model in your impact startup. Many impact startups start falling short of projections because of lack of funding and end up going out of business. Taking the startup to scale, that's when real impact is achieved. So at the end of the day, we need you to win and the world needs impact startups to win. Impact startups are important to force entire systems to change. 
it's hard enough to build a startup, let alone this added intentionality of impact. So founders who focus just on impact at the expense of financial returns and business growth would risk putting their businesses underwater. They could end up losing investor interest and ultimately wouldn't be able to make a much greater impact down the lane. So please test your commercial viability, define your market and ecosystem, build in financial returns business model, and chart out a framework to scale. Create and scale value in a socially and financially sustainable way, not just socially sustainable way, but also financially sustainable way. I would now touch upon the bucket on measuring and benchmarking impact. Now, measuring impact is complex and it will look different for every type of startup. But the main point to keep in mind is to measure to improve, not for the sake of checking the boxes. So implement and measure one or two impact metrics effectively, rather than doing a lot of metrics and trying to apply all that might apply to your solution. Lots of measurement benchmarks exist, but choose the right one that fits into your impact business model and get officially certified if possible. Many methodologies of measuring and scoring are very expensive and time consuming, especially the ones that are manually done by consultants, etc. And it's because impact analytics in a, in a space itself is still evolving. In fact, we need more impact driven startups to tackle this area. So all the more reason why you should just focus on effectively measuring one or two metrics rather than many. Treat these impact metrics as KPIs. You can communicate the impact that you're making much more effectively using them over time. Impact KPIs should be treated the same way and alongside financial KPIs. So let these KPIs quantify your growth over time and show the growth that show uh, how you are making this impact much more effectively over time alongside all the financial KPIs. And if you do this right, your startup will catch the eyes of investors. So keep a triangle of impact, scale, and returns in mind when building your impact startup and make this triangle measurable. Now, the next bucket I wanna speak about is how to get funded. Now, as an impact-driven startup, you need to be strategic in identifying sources of funding. There are a variety of mission-aligned institutions so don't focus only on private capital. Look for strategic partnerships, government grants, affiliate programs, service models, regulatory licensing. And as far as private capital is concerned, look for impact investors, government funds, accelerators, entrepreneur support organizations, and foundations. The right investor is important. And why is that? So that down the lane on your startup journey, you wouldn't need to pivot away from your impact intentions that you set out for just because the investors have started prioritizing financial returns. But having said that, if you articulate your impact vision, your passion, and your business and financial proposition. Using the measurable triangle of impact, scale, and returns that we just discussed, even conventional investors could jump on your side. Remember that there are many impact startups that have reached the unicorn status, and more impact startups are expected to come in the future. Those are inspirations 
to optimize your impact models with sustainable business models. Lastly, I want to touch upon a very important piece, which is to have a mission alignment mindset all the way. And what I mean by that is that in your decision making process, at every step, have the mission alignment mindset in how you hire, in the sort of culture you build within your organization, which partners you choose, what you prioritize at various steps, that mission alignment is essential. So you don't lose sight of the impact that you started out to make through this startup. So good luck with your startups. The world needs many more startups like yours. And I hope you're able to make use of some of the points that we discussed today to refine your strategy. Please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn for any questions on this topic. Happy to help and support. And I'll now pass on to Asad to take over. That was very enlightening. Thank you for that, Sonali, and for sharing your insights on that. I really like the framework that you described with the triangle about the impact, the scale, and the returns, and how uh, the link between profitability, profitability and impact investments. There seems to be this old age belief that if you want to be an impact startup, it doesn't always translate into commercial success, but I personally also feel that's not true. And as we keep going into this era where we think of the Gen Z and the new generation who are even more into the impact universe. It's it's very exciting times for the space ahead. Uh, so Absolutely. thank you. Thank you for your thoughts on that. I will throw a few curveball questions your way just to, uh, <laughs> just to have a little bit more insight on this very interesting topic. So the first one that I would like to send your way is you mentioned quite a few of these buckets, which are very important to consider as an impact uh, uh, venture. What would you say is the one key piece of advice you would give to impactpreneurs looking to secure funding for their startups? Right. So if I have to choose um, one most important bucket, that would be scale. And uh, why I say that is because to be able, if you just keep scale in mind that any impact needs bro a broad base it needs scale. The fact that it is impact, it needs scale all the more. Uh, and so if you just keep this one bucket in mind, all the others would fall in place as well, because to be able to achieve scale, you need to build in financial returns model so that you can have the right team, the right resources, uh, uh, and so that you don't fall short of your projections, you can keep getting funded. Uh, if you keep scale in mind, then you will also have already done your product market fit uh, well and uh, exactly ascertained the real adoption of your product. So just keeping scale in mind would probably be the key thing. Uh, and that would also let you fit into the investor's mindset. It's interesting you mentioned scale because normally people associate scale as the name of the game for most other companies, but it's clearly one of those very few rare instances where scale is still a one size fits for many other industries, including the impact driven startups. So that's very interesting to hear that you pick scale. Um, on that note, another one that comes to mind is as your experience in the VC space and you've been around it for quite a while. Would you say that the gap between traditional startups and impact startups applying for funding is beginning to close now, or would you say it's still quite distinct? Uh, so absolutely, I think the gap is definitely closing. Uh, and that is proven by many more impact startups becoming unicorns. And uh, as I uh, touched upon in my uh, in all the points that there is something or the other to gain for everyone in the wider ecosystem from impact, uh, be it organizations, be it investors, be it institutions, governments, not just impact-based startups and the problem that they are trying to tackle or the industry that they are trying to tackle. So there's so much more awareness and there's so much more uh, focus on impact in the wider ecosystem that this, uh, for sure, this funding gap 
is going to decrease even more because conventional investors are already looking to jump that wagon that impact wouldn't be the uh, the burden of just impact funds uh, it would definitely become a very attractive uh, proposition for conventional investors as well and that's why the financial returns and the business model the sustainable business model needs to be coupled with the sustainable impact in impact startups awesome and one last one that comes to mind is we've spoken about how the gap is closing but from a vc perspective as well what would you say is uh, as a vc the impact driven startups are they the next gold rush like when you think of this if we pick a few geographies in mind we think of gaming in turkey being a huge thing within the mina region fintech is a huge thing if i look across the pond over in pakistan b2b e-commerce is a big thing but when it comes specifically to impact driven startups how big are they as a, a gold rush for the vcs well impact is becoming like i said that impact is becoming a very attractive piece for everyone, for VCs as well. Because at the end of the day, uh, and that's why this education on uh, impact-driven startups, on building in the right business model comes in. Because the moment you have both of these, investing just in, uh, in a portfolio versus investing in a portfolio with, which can also build in purpose is definitely much more attractive for every investor. So this is for sure, uh, I'm sure this is going to lead into a gold rush down the lane. And uh, with everything that's happening around with many more technologies coming up for impact startups, as well as many impact startups utilizing the latest, uh, the exponential technologies to enable more in, uh, inventions and innovations, this is only going to become much more attractive for all types of investors going forward. That's excellent to hear from a perspective of impact driven companies. And I'm sure they'll take a lot of key takeaways from this session. Thank you very much once again for your time, Sonali. It's been a pleasure to host you and for uh, giving us all your knowledge on this topic, this very engaging topic. Thank you. Thank you, Asad. Thank you.